since I'd already been shopping at Dollar Tree, may as well go to St. Vincent's too, right? Sure, why not? Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. Yes, I went to St. Vincent's, even though I said I wasn't going to do that this year. I haven't been in a long, long time because I really, I don't need anything. Although I am searching for a specific thing for a specific project and I am looking anywhere and that includes St. Vinny's. So anytime I have to go out that way to pick up cookies for my Beastly's, I stop in to see if I can find the pieces and parts for my project. I haven't yet found that, those things, that thing, those things that I'm looking for, but I did find a whole bunch of cool stuff and I'm here to share it with you. A few videos back, I told you that Meg Journals has a new altered book project going and it's just a little guy. It's just a tiny, about this size, but it's a book. And I found some on Amazon. I linked that in that video there and I'll link that video below but I found some more and these aren't these aren't as big this is the biggest one they're they're pretty skinny but they would they would still make beautiful altered books and they're from the 1920s one's 26 1926 1930 and the other one has the letters instead of roman numerals so I don't quite know and Siri can't help me right this second so I'm assuming it's about the same time they were all owned by the same person that person right there is the same person who owned that you see they're all pretty old and they're all about music now lots of things to do with this because it has music you, know, you can just tear out the little bits and use that in clusters and whatnot but if you want to do a music themed altered book this would be terrific because all of the background everything in it will have to do with music instead of doing a music themed altered book in a love story or a thriller novel right the background will play a part in and that's one of the things i really like about meg journal's new project is she's using a vintage wildflowers observer's guide and so it has information about all kinds of wildflowers in addition to beautiful illustrations and so if you were doing something music themed this would be the great a really great background for for that kind of thing i am doing a music journal and i want to include one of these probably the smallest one as as a tuck-in for it but i may put these up on my etsy shop so keep an eye out i may just turn these around because i'm only as far as i know doing one musically themed project 1926 so that makes this one 1930 that old i'll flash it up on the screen so you don't have to ask dr google but beautiful and this is a little bit bigger um, this one is musical terms so those were some really cool finds from the vintage section candy cane creates is gonna flip on this one i think many people might but i know she loves cooking and whatnot this was part of the vintage in the vintage section it's my recipes it's a cookbook a bound all beautifully naturally aged with food thrown all over it and oil and stains and coffee index to recipes bread cake pastry desserts drinks egg cheese fish meat preserved salad soups and vegetables let's see is there a year in here oh not that i'm seeing there's a three hole punched envelope and all kinds of hand written baking powder biscuits sifted flour baking powder blah 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 and then you make waffles after that she has i'm assuming it's a she put a three hole punch envelope in here and, and tucked inside here are, are all kind I, I i've not seen any of this i didn't know this was here until this very second old witch's nut cake that sounds right up my alley old witch harvey wallbanger cake for those of you who are very young, Harvey Wallbanger was a very popular drink in the 60s and early 70s. Look, we're going to put alcohol in it. Woo woo! My kind of cake. Mm-hmm. Bring it on. So that's what's tucked in here. In this tasty summer snacks. Meal made in a jiffy. What's this from? Luncheon, dinner, bridge luncheon, school lunch, Saturday night supper, buffet supper, afternoon tea, picnic what to serve even breakfast no date 
But my guess is it's all with saltine crackers. Because look at all the saltine. What else do we have? Tucked in the secret envelope. Saturday, sweet and sour meatballs. Friday, boneless pork roast with onion butter seasoned Brussels sprouts. Frozen cherry loaf. Chocolate angel pie. Yeah. Sure, let's see what else is in this book that has no date, but is nice, nice, nice and old. There's all these cute little tabs. Cake and pastry. Oh, she put an envelope in each. Oh, look at there. Christmas greetings and best wishes for the new year. And there's a tea dainties. Oh, it sounds right up Janet Nash's alley, doesn't it? Tea dainties. Butter, sugar, egg, flour, salt, almond extract. Any extract, actually. Put through a cookie press and bake. Spice cake, walnut chiffon cake. Look at all of these beautiful handwritten. Isn't this fantastic? This is this is one of my best finds ever, I think. Look how yummy. The ink bled all over the place. There's not something in every envelope. But I know some of you are doing ring-bound journals, tucking an envelope in like this is a brilliant addition for added storage. I just love... So it looks like this book... Maybe it came that way because they're all the same. Every envelope is the same size. It's not just like extra. But this was a way to store... Because there aren't any... Um, there aren't any printed recipes. They're all, every single recipe in here, except for the ones that are clipped and snipped. Oh, give me a date. This one's as old as 1995, but I know this book is older than that. Let's see. Give me a date on one thing that's handwritten. She wrote where she got it from whose recipe it was. No need refrigerator rolls. Directions for using your cold pack canner. Forgotten cookies. Rhubarb cake. Not one stinking date anywhere. Butterscotch wheels. Creamy beef bake. And Toll House cookies. That's an interesting mix, isn't it? Creamy beef bake in with the Toll House cookies from canned beets. What's up with that? And then all this beautiful paper that's nice and old and aged and ready for something. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, I love this book. My recipes. Ring works good still. That's awesome. I may put this in my Etsy shop. I might keep a few of the recipes, but I may just put it up in my Etsy shop because I'm running out of room here and... I don't know. <laughs> I also have that 1954 cookbook that was a printed cookbook that's falling apart because it was so well loved. But look at all the goodies on this one. She used this one a lot. There's oil and oh, by the way, at the end of this video, I'm going to add a tutorial. I sent a recipe in to Marty, who's making a Friends of the Trolley Treats journal, and I wasn't thinking. I I made the recipe in canva my re one of my favorite recipes i put it in canva and i printed it out on aged paper or what looked like aged paper and then i aged it thinking vintage cookbook for some reason it wasn't until i had that completely done that i thought this is a harry potter thing like, duh so i redid the whole thing with a harry potter theme i put magic sparkles coming from it and the back is all harry potter stuff so it's a it's the same exact recipe but with a harry potter theme because it is of course friends of the trolley but i had such fun aging that recipe to look sort of like this i'll flash a picture up here of what my aged recipe look like it looks like it's been around a while that it's been used several times and i'll show you at the end of this video how i did that it's real quick and super simple and i wasn't planning this haul video to be a tutorial but since we're on the topic I'll show ya, but that's at the end because I gotta get this off my desk first. Do not stir. I just love this book. I just love this book. And the teeny tiny little tabs. So cute. And it's in it's everything is here. What I I'm just thrilled with that. Just thrilled with that. Another thing I'm super thrilled at, I was looking on eBay for those books 
to do something like Meg Journal's Altered Book Project. And I came across these stamps, vintage stamps. I'm looking for a stamp set that looks like old typewriter. Not too big, not too small, but it looks like old typewriter rubber stamps. And there are several on eBay. And they're in these beautiful wooden boxes. And they have a, a bit of a logo on the, on the top, bottom right of the top of the box that they're stored in wooden box so they look very vintage and all the ebay people say vintage stamp set 20 bucks vintage stamp set and i thought i i know i've seen these someplace else and lo and behold go on amazon they're 12 dollars all day long you don't have to pay 20 dollars for the quote-unquote vintage they're not vintage they look vintage but they're brand new so watch what you buy on ebay because holy smackaroni they're full of shit sometimes so because i was looking at stamp sets this one came up, it was an auction, and the bid started at 99 cents. And if it's still there, I'll throw a picture up for you. Because it wasn't what I was looking for, but it was like no other stamp set font that I'd seen before. It was very different. And I like to have stuff that's different in my books that not everyone and their brother has. And this font was kind of whimsical and I put it on my watch list and then promptly forgot about it. It sold for a whopping two dollars. Two dollars plus shipping might have been a total of eight dollars but but a very kind of rare looking stamp set that would have just been so much fun to play with. And so I was at St. Vinny's fun type stamps in this Huggies baby wipes container. Two dollars. The universe is a magical place, I swear, I swear. And I was looking at all these and I thought, well, damn, there's only half the alphabet here. Well, hello, genius, the other half of the alphabet's on the other side. So it has A through Z, at, and and. And this is what they look like. If you press real hard, they can look like type typewriter keys, because you get the whole circle. But if you do it kind of lightly, then you just get the letter which I think is fun. So I, I stamped them all out to see how they all work and what they look like. The at is kind of hokey, especially if you do it upside down. You can't even tell what it is. But even upside right, it kind of looks wonky. But all the rest of them are, are fabulous. So I, I did one or two or three of each because, look, you got to be careful or it ends up upside down. I think I did that on a couple. Yeah, my L's upside down. And then after I did that, I just used a scrap piece of paper to clean it off. Every time I did one stamp, I brought it over here and stamped until the ink was gone to clean off the rubber stamp. And I think that's a great piece of paper to add to a journal or to use as a background or in collage or whatever. And so ultimately I did get my, my letter stamps that look like typeface typewriter letters for two dollars no shipping and handling required and and a handy dandy little case to keep it in yeah how how fun is that so that was a great find very happy about that i found another one of those very small coloring books what i love about this one is uh, the ones from dollar tree are one-sided cheapos but everyone in here is double-sided so more pages for my little journals. And these, if they have an upside right, I can take both pages out, hinge them together, and they will stay upside right in my journals. Why? Because sideways stuff drives me bonkers. There's no reason for it. We'll come to that at the end. National Audubon Society. Can you see yeah, trees? Look at the beautiful trees embossed. This is like a celery, a light celery, yellowish green cover. This was in, all the vintage books are priced differently now. They used to all be one price, but now they, it depends on what that person thinks it's worth. This is the second edition from 1973. Wonderful pictures of all kinds of critters. For my uncle and, and cousin who who's big into hunting and lodge stuff, that'll go in his. Tracks, some black and white, vintage black and white, some botanicals, which in small doses are very beautiful. It just, I'm just saying, just saying there's more to life than butterflies and botanicals. There's frogs. 
So this could serve as an altered book. It's a smaller size than, it's, it's a different size. I shouldn't say smaller necessarily. It's taller and narrower, but it has beautiful, beautiful pictures in it. Gray and red phases of the screech owl. For a, do for a dollar, that was the cheapest book on the, on the vintage side. <laughs> I think maybe it was mismarked or misplaced or something. I don't know. I got this in the regular books area because it's black and purple. And those are some of my favorite colors. And Doki Doki Forest, Amy and I were talking about doing maybe a Maleficent journal. And I thought, whoa, looky there. I could do a Maleficent altered book. If I had some, just a tiny strip of magic green, I could cover the the title in that and show of is it called show of evil yeah it's a perfect villain altered book cover so had to have that mine that's mine that's mine all mine i was telling some friends the other day when i was a kid i saw a movie in the 70s called the little girl that lives down the lane it has a very very young martin sheen charlie sheen's dad martin sheen and an even younger jodie foster and it's kind of a scary kind of a thriller mystery and it never left me i always thought about that movie i just loved it years and years later i managed i worked at a video store a couple video stores in the 80s and 90s and i managed a video store and even then i was looking for it wasn't on video couldn't get it nobody ever heard of it i was beginning to feel like i made the thing up like did i dream it did i imagine it and then once YouTube came out and the internet and whatnot, I started searching again. Every couple of years when it would come into my head, I'd look and, nope, not available, nope, not available. Well, one day, it showed up on my YouTube feed. Holy smokes, there it is. So I watched it. It was free on YouTube, and I watched it and loved it every bit as much as I did when I saw it as a kid. And a couple, maybe two weeks later, Mom and I were doing Saturday crafting, and I was, it was Saturday, and I always run horror, 70s, 80s horror movies, on Saturday that's how I know it's a different day around here because all my days are the same on the computer on the computer on the computer Saturdays are scary movies from the 70s and 80s and Sundays are black and white movies that way I know what day it is anyway I told my mom about it and she goes I never I don't remember that at all and I said oh we gotta watch it and I put it on and it's no longer free on YouTube it's paid on YouTube all of that to say in the vintage book section, I found the book. I had no idea it was based on a book. <laughs> I can't wait to read it. Koenig, written by Koenig, I think it says. It's hard to read that. Koenig, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's first name? Can't read it. Come on, tell me who it's who it's by. Laird. From Holy no, that's music. Never mind. I saw 1924. I thought, holy smack, but this book was written in 1974. And then shortly thereafter, the movie came out with Martin Sheen and a very young Jodie Foster. And if you get a chance, that's a pretty cool movie. I cannot wait to read the book. I was so surprised. And again, this is kind of PCU stuff, my other channel, Positively Creative View, but I'm always talking about how the universe is at play. And once you tell your mind to focus on something, and once it's part of your filtering system, it turns up everywhere. This book was written in 1974, and only in the last couple of months have I A, found it on YouTube again, and B, tried to find it and couldn't find it. And so it's it's... It's right there at the surface of my brain, and there, lo and behold, the universe serves it up for me. Where has this book been since 1974, right? It's how our brain's reticular activating system works. This was probably sitting there every time I went to St. Vinny's the last three years, but it wasn't important to me, and I never looked at it, or I didn't see it. I might have looked right at it and didn't see it. That's magical to me. That's just... That is the universe at play. I think that's wonderful. This one was loose. I think it was a dollar. And it's, so it's got the postage kind of a thing. It's kind of big. You know, that's kind of a big postmark. But I thought it was different and kind of fun. So for a dollar, I got it. And then I did pick up one of the bags. They were three dollars. This is one of the smaller bags. Oh yeah, that was from that one stamp. So one stamp was 99 and all the rest of these were $3 for the whole bag. And before I used them, they didn't have any ink on them. Like they were pristine until I got my, my myth on it. 
except this one. This one had paint on it. So either they took really, really good care of them, or this was the only one that was used. So I got a giant Christmas tree, just a generic little fern leafy kind of thing. Another tree. I didn't realize there were two trees in there. I got this tree in a magazine, a stamp magazine. It had, I don't know, 40 stamps in it or some blasted thing. And it had this, this Christmassy tree in it. And I have used the bejesus out of this. And so having a regular tree, and I like to do it two or three so that there's a gathering of trees. And so now I can put them together and, and have more, more tree options. So that was a no brainer. And the fern and the leaf just, you know, they just go hand in hand and a, a pretty ivy. Those can go in almost anything, any kind of journal. I recently noticed in a lot of Christmas stuff that ivy has a lot to do with Christmas. I don't know if it'd be that kind of ivy or not, but very generic, can be used all over the place. Stamps for three dollars. One, two, three, four, five. So 60 cents a piece and they all work beautifully. This one's so, I mean, I, I'm amazed at how detailed they are. I'm always just kind of struck by that. I gotta get out more. I know, I know. And finally, this pictorial history of crime, 1840 to present, 750 illustrations, because we're here for the pictures. This was written in 1966, up to 1900, the 20, 20th century, the first half of the 20th century. Some, what do we got here? An extortion letter. This is the very last time we're going to ask you for $25,000. That was in 1954. Victims, accusers. So there's news clippings. There's letters written by bad guys. There's evidence photos. There's crime scene photos. Hoo, 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 hoo. I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm a true crime junkie. Have been since I learned about Jack the Ripper. Maybe around age 8 or 9. 10 maybe 10 i i learned about bonnie and clyde and oh then i was off and running true crime has been part of my life forever you may or may not know but i've recently launched my my true crime podcast called crime is common logic is rare and it's been so much fun it's, it's been a slow start but it's been a long time coming and i'm so glad that it's finally going uh, but this is right uh my true crime junkie alley I'm sure that I'll be talking about stuff in here on that podcast eventually. It's a little bit different take on. I'm, I've am i been watching, reading, researching, writing about true crime for 40 plus years, 45 years. I'm not going to tell you how long. Really long time. And I'm tired of the same old, same old little geography lesson, which seems to be required for the new true crime channels all over Here's California. California's in the United States. California is known for wine in Hollywood. Oh my God. We're here for the crime, not for the tourism brochure. Like, I've, unless it has anything to do with the case, get it, make it go away. Little geography lesson. Here are the players. They were born. This is their background. This is how they met. Here's the facts of the case. Here's the outcome of the trial. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. As you well know, redundancy, repetition, cookie cutter, blah, 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 makes me crazy. So my take on true crime is very different. I'm going to assume you've seen all the things and I don't go into many details unless it's an obscure case that you may not know of, that not everybody knows of. If I say Chris Watts, even if you don't watch true crime, you know who Christopher Watts is, right? So, very different take on true crime. I call it true crime with a twist. I'm jazzed about this. I've been collecting these kind of books since I was a kid. So, as promised, I'm going to show you real quick how to make a recipe look vintage. If you're doing a vintage book and you want to include old recipes and you don't happen to have one of these way cool books that I just found at St. Vinny's, you can make new recipes look old. And I'm going to show you that here in just two shakes of a lamb's tail. I want to remove my pretty background so I don't junk it up because I am a messy, messy crafter. So 
crafter table. We're going to make some crafty mess. I took my frozen cake, freezer cake. This is the banana version, freezer cake. The reason it's called that is because you take it right from the oven and you put it directly in the freezer until it's cooled completely. And oh my goodness, it's the most moist cake you've ever had ever. It's wonderful. You don't have to have Canva to do this for sure, but it does help. What I did was, and you can do this with the free version, I looked in elements for old paper or old folded paper. And you can see that there's a, a fold line right here. Now that's, it has no dimension to it. It's not actually folded, it's just printed. I put my cake recipe on there and I printed it a blank side with that fold in it as well. I don't know if you can see, there's a, there's a very faint fold line here too. If you don't have Canva, you don't have to do that, but it does help to get this, this vintagey color because you don't, a vintage recipe is not going to be bright white, right? So it has to have some kind of background. So if you don't want to use Canva's free version and put an old piece of paper below what you're working on, you can use linen colored paper or a light yellowy colored paper. If your printer will take it, use some of your coffee dyed stuff. But that's part of it. It has to be a little on the yellow side. I'm going to use those folds and I'm going to fold. Probably be easier to do it this way first. And it might not be, it might not be perfectly folded. In fact, it's way off, I think. So it's not straight and it's not perfect, but that's where that faux fold is. And I'm going to fold along that. I think you can see it there again, faux fold line. And I still have this beautiful little cookbook here handy. And we're going to take our cues, our, our P's and Q's, our lessons from these. This has to be from the 50s. It has to be that old. I'm just going to pick one at random. They don't always get folded up the same. They don't always get folded neatly. But here's a, a genuine folded letter or old recipe. This one's in pretty good shape compared to some of the others. It has that nice yellow line where the fold mark was. A lot of yellow lines. Let's look at it this way. Look how dark that yellow line is. It's not coffee brown though. It's not too terribly dark. So for this but I already have yellow on here, so I may have to use my vintage photo a little bit. This is Antique Linen Distress Ink, and I'm also going to be playing with Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. I kind of use them interchangeably. I use whatever I have. Uh, I have the ink in this color, and I have the oxide in this color, and so that's what I'm using. These little guys, I don't often use a dauber. I just use it. And, I, and I'm just going to go along that faux fold line ever so lightly. It doesn't have to be too heavy handed. Just a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to do these fold lines too. And it, I don't have to get it everywhere. I just have to get it in some of the spots. Because there's already some printed. I'm going to fold it back the other way. And do the same thing. Just a little. On all of those folds. Sometimes I get it where I don't mean it, and that's okay. Now I'm going to use this as my cue as well. This one, and I'll just pull. See how the edge of this book one, because this was exposed all the time, how the edge is a little bit darker. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I, I'm going to. Oh, my folds are wrong. I printed it wrong. So on one side, my fold is in one spot. And on the other side, my fold is in a different spot. And that's okay. It actually works to my benefit. Because sometimes you fold them up different. I was wondering for a long time what I would use this vintage linen for. Because it is so light. I'm also now just going around and darkening the edges. Like this. Heather and yawn, more here than there sometimes. And just hitting those edges. I'm gonna fold it, 
into that crease. And the whole point here is to make it look used and well-loved. And this was Grandma's favorite recipe. And it's been in the family for years. I also try to pay attention to where where someone would hold it. They're, they're going to hold it like this. Or the opposite, depending on what hand. They might hold it right here in the center. That's where all these dirty fingerprints came from. It's from people holding it. So I have that crease and this crease. This crease, sort of. I can do a little bit more on the edge here. Oh, look, and I got... So I got it kind of where I didn't want it. I'm just going to put a little fold there and make it look like I meant to do that. And just a little, a little bit on that crease and a little bit on that crease and those creases. And very light handed here. But I want it to be dirty where people are thumbing it, where people are holding on to it. I want that to be dirty. I'm going to crease that and do the creases. There's a lot of, a lot of ha handling here. So handle it. And then dirty it up a little bit. Now, I saw this on a video, and I cannot tell you whose video it was. I was flipping through, flipping through, flipping through. I have no idea who I saw do this, but I think it's brilliant. One of the ways this person, and if you know who it is, let me know, and I will certainly give them credit, because you know I'm all about giving credit where credit is due. A little cranky about that. Yeah, but that's a story for another day. One of the ways that that person vintages up her paper is she rolls it. And I've done mine on a diagonal. And just roll it. Just keep kind of rolling it. And you can feel it, it's, it's softening up those paper fibers and it's giving it a whole new feel. So now it's, you know, who needs that? So we don't want to leave it that way. And I know I've seen Louise Heinzel, she tears pieces apart and, and wrinkles pieces up on purpose. You know, things get wet. Now I have to be very careful. I can't get this too wet. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna roll this a different way so it'll stop curling up on me all I'm doing it really now is spinning it it's already rolled I'm just giving it a good spin fold it in half so I what I was gonna say is I have to be very careful I can't get this wet because my non laser printing printer will the ink will run so i'm just gonna tear off a bit and now i've got I don't know if you can see it but fresh white paper there i don't i don't need fresh white paper there and that looks like a bite mark i don't want it to look like a bite mark i want it to look like a piece chunked out of it by accident from being handled so much but i have to i have to color that you can't have white White, white, bright white will will ruin any faux vintage thing that you try to... If you're trying to do vintage, 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 and the white on the back shows, illusion broken. Reality suspension dropped. So anytime you can, this is taking a page from Steve Jobs, make the back look as vintage as the front. If you want a truly vintage look, don't leave it bright white on the back. It it just kills the illusion. Okay, so I have a torn there and I'm gonna tear it a little bit on the because you know it's been through a lot. Use your nails and crease it a little bit. Fold it back and forth and back and forth. Where those creases are, again, I always try to lightly accentuate them just a little bit and if you want to use a dauber for this this is just a wooden spool with a, a a tim holtz dauber on it get some ink on there and just lightly dirty up those pages maybe again more where the thumbs would be 
more where the thumbs would be. Somebody's got to hold it over here. There has to be one left-handed person in the family, right? Put that on that side. So we're getting closer, I think, right? Looking kind of vintage. We've got our nice dark edges. We have our dirty spots. I think we could... I'm going to just very, very lightly with the vintage photo. Yeah, that's so dark. That's so dark for this. There's some stuff in the middle, just some dirt just in the middle. Here, here, all through here is all dirty. Just because they use it when they're cooking. So stuff gets messy. Any place you think it looks too, too bright, knock her down a little bit. Give her some love. Curl, curl those little bit of edges. And then, again, make sure the crease gets dirty. So you can do that until your heart's content. If you if you feel brave, you can. I'm putting literally a drop or two on my finger and of water and spattering it. I know it's going to sort of move the ink a little bit, but it'll also just give me some more grunge, some more aging. Where did it land? I don't even know. I want to go too heavy-handed with it because I don't want to ruin my print. But I can hear that it's hitting, so I'm just going to let it do its thing. Here's my favorite part, and this is. This is going the extra mile, I think. And this is what I did to the one that I sent out to Marty. So, so fear not. It's not, you know, everything is illusion when we vintage something up like this. Everything is an illusion. But one of the things that often happens is we get, we get grease on it because we're cooking with butter. We're cooking with oil. We got, we got stuff going on. So I'm not using cooking oil because I don't want critters invading anybody's journals. I don't want, what I'm using is baby oil. Just a, just a drop or two here and there. Rub it into your fingers. Because that's what these dirty spots are. It's, it's human oil. Our skin is oily. And from touching it while we're cooking and pulling it out of the book and flipping through, that's how these thumb marks get here. So put some thumb marks in. And the oil takes a little bit of time to do its magic. So don't, if you're not seeing it right away, don't go crazy with it. Do it now, wait for a while, and then come back to it. But then even front and back, your, your recipe now looks like it's been in the family forever. You want to add one more layer of vintageness to it? Put, put a date, 1926. That is how I vintage up a recipe for a vintage recipe book. I think this this brand new, I just printed it here while we were together, looks every bit as vintage as these. Go make some vintage recipes and throw them in your vintage journals just for fun. Some of your family favorites, put them up. Canva is a big help with this. Like I said, putting you know printing an old piece of paper, but you don't need that. You can do it just on cream cream colored paper. My coffee spray isn't here. I would put one or two drops, just a couple tiny little drops of my coffee on here too, just for one more layer of, oh my God, it's been used a million times. Family favorite. And then you can tuck that in and oh, what fun that would be to come across. I think it needs a little bit more. A little bit more love around those edges because, because, do a little bit at a time. It's really easy to overdo this, really easy. So it's been a couple of hours since I played around with this. Let the oil sink in, let the water do what it's going to do. Pretty happy with it. If this were for my journal, I would probably use avocado oil or MCT oil, kitchen oil, because the baby oil doesn't seem to be doing it. But maybe I just didn't use enough. Always good to have you here. Tell me what you think. Tell me your vintage secrets. I'd love to know. Until we meet again, you have a lovely, lovely crafty day. Go love up those beastlies because that's what they're here for, for us to spoil them rotten.
Lots to get the lake. Out for now.